What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining me today on the Stellar Highway. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man. This book is from Chip Zardarsky, uh, Kinois, Rivera, and Gibson. I'm not familiar with any of these guys. Um, I have heard a little bit about Chip Zdarsky. Um, I heard his previous story arc was pretty good stuff. Um, and I was dying to read some Spider-Man. So, um, the Amazing Spider-Man book is kind of like in sort of a big transition right now. They're wrapping up a big epic storyline. That sounds awesome, but it's just about over and I'm just going to wait for that to be over and catch up when it's completed. Um, so in the meantime, this was kind of starting a new story arc, so I jumped in. Um, not the easiest place to jump in, but I mean, they have these recaps here, and I mean, this isn't rocket science, but basically, um, there's a villain, uh, the Tinker, and he has made some kind of deal with, uh, sort of this alien race, or this AI called the Vedam, v Vedam, I think the pronunciation of this is <laughs> kind of up in the air, Vedam, Vedam, if you know the proper pronunciation, let me know in the comments, but yeah, basically, um, Peter, J. Jonah Jameson and Peter's maybe sister, Teresa, uh, travel into the past to stop the Tinker and from making this deal with the AI and getting the method of stopping the Vedum from the Tinker. So um, basically the future is too messed up to save, so they jumped into the past. And uh, here we have like classic uh, teenage Spidey and he's coming home after some patrol and uh, he's greeted by the future versions of of himself uh, J. Jonah Jameson and uh, Teresa so basically uh, yeah he immediately thinks it's Mysterio but yeah it's good stuff basically Peter convinces him that they are who they say they are he makes this little bit about uh, Jameson receiving the world's first personality trans uh, trans personality transplant in the future anyways good kind of cute stuff um but uh yeah it kind of shows right off the bat you know that you know young pd is is kind of like fiery and stuff like that um but uh yeah i i really like this and i actually you know have criticized like easy low effort kind of archy style art but Man, this really works for this book. Um, I don't know if it's the time travel aspect of it, the idea that we're back in the 60s era type Spider-Man, but I think the art's great. Um, everything, you know, it really works for me. Um, and of course, a nice little Fantastic Four cover down here. But yeah, um, basically tell Pete, you know, what's going on, why they're here, um, that they'll be staying next door uh, in the Watson's house while they're out. Um, and basically what ensues is old Peter and young Peter, um, like just wailing on all of his enemies. Cause he's just trying to, uh, make young Peter's life easier, kind of help him out, um, help, you know, help save him from some of the effort. Um, but yeah, again, I, I love the art here. Everything's very classic looking, but very cool. Um, it's like, uh, uh, it has sort of the style that, um, that, that's hard to define, but I like, I like what they're doing with the art here. It's good stuff. But yeah, some of the strongest bits here are the Jameson bits, but basically they're all kind of trying to find the whereabouts of the Tinker, uh, Teresa and Jameson, that is. And, uh, Jameson goes back and does what Jameson would do. And he meets his younger self and, uh, <laughs> kind of proves him proves who he is, you know, by showing his kind of rabid, like, news reporter <laughs> self, and, and, uh, it's, it's good stuff, he basically, there's some heavy stuff here, he, you know, he tells him, you know, to be careful in the future, and to appreciate the people he meets, and good stuff like that, and he does kick off some events here that, um, really started with Spidey and young Spidey, uh, fighting all those villains is that this is some of the most reckless time travel you've ever seen. I mean, the stuff they do in this just seems like anyone would know it was a bad idea. You know, it's like he tells him a bunch of stuff about his future. Spidey's intervening in the past. Um, and, uh, 
he reveals um, Peter's identity because, you know, in this story, um, Jameson knows that, you know, Peter is Spider-Man and they've kind of made allies. Um, but, uh, yeah, in the end, they kind of do this little, uh, they attack the goblin. Um, they do this Scooby-Doo-esque um, uh, bit here where he reveals that the goblin is, you know, Norman Osborn. Um, so basically, they kind of swing off into the night. Um, the goblin escapes before they actually get him in jail. Um, and he decides, you know, my secret's out. Everyone knows who I am. I'm ruined. And he just slams down the rest of the goblin formula. Um, meanwhile, Teresa's contribution is a little more, uh, a little less for the cause. Um, but, uh, she does kind of get with her old boss who surprised is Nick Fury. Um, and she kind of requests into the Parker safe house. So that's kind of where that leave off because there is some question apparently as to whether or not Teresa is Peter's sister. I guess it's kind of an ongoing mystery. This is my introduction to Teresa. Um, hard to say anything really about her because she's not given a lot to do in this book, but, um, apparently she was a shield agent and, uh, not really sure what she does now, but she kind of came back into Peter's life at the beginning of this Chip Zdarsky run. So kind of just a consequence of me not being caught up with Spider-Man. Like, I think I dropped out after Spider-Verse. So I'm not sure what I missed, but Teresa was one of the things that I am missed out on and I'm not quite caught up on. But uh, not a lot to say about Teresa. She doesn't strike me as like an unforgettable addition to the Marvel Universe or to Peter's life, but, you know, she's young. It seems like a new thing. It could grow into something interesting, but... Um, so the second issue, which has an amazing throwback cover, I love it. Um, uh, the second issue kind of picks up uh, with a little more of just Peter uh, at school, and you kind of see how tough he had it, and... Again, you know, they, they do make an effort to show how fiery young Peter is and stuff like that. And, man, Flash is pretty savage here uh, with this, uh, this guy goes through uncles like you wouldn't believe. Uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good stuff. Um, but uh, it basically shows kind of some of the fallout of the last issue. Where Osborne has been unmasked and good stuff like that. But uh, Osborne is on a tear since his life has been ruined, basically, and he goes after Jameson for publishing his identity, wherein, you know, some of the more, like, reckless time travel stuff go comes into play. You know, he, he learns that Peter is Spider-Man, uh, thanks to this mock-up that is getting ready to go to the print, and apparently just bombs Jameson. Doesn't look like he's going to walk away from that. But, uh, meanwhile, Teresa gets access to the safe house. She finds some good stuff, including a picture of Mary Parker holding a baby. She learns from Nick Fury that they had a pregnancy cover on one of their missions. So this pretty much confirms that she is Peter's sister. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, and that's, like, her biggest uh revelation i think in this story arc but uh basically future peter sends past peter home he's like you know he's you know he's so fired up and everything i think this time travel stuff is is no good you know he we should probably let him take a break and catch up and uh when he goes home naturally something's amiss and the goblin's waiting for him so at this point, the book goes from kind of light and fun um, and all the reckless time travel stuff kind of reaches ahead and just ramps up the stakes like crazy high. It's good stuff. Um, but basically, Norman's all jacked up on the goblin formula. He takes out Peter. He's, of course, captured Aunt May as well. And that's kind of where they leave us. So, yeah, yeah, good stuff. I thought this was very exciting, moved very quickly. Um, it was, uh, 
a good setup. It was interesting to find out about Teresa. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is a strong issue. Um, it, it makes, uh, it flows really well from the previous issue. I liked it a lot. Um, and I definitely rushed right out to pick up the third issue. I had to drive around a little bit to find it. But uh, the third issue, again, amazing throwback cover there. If you, I don't know Spidey from like 40 years ago exactly, but even like, you know, most people have seen some of these famous pieces of Spider-Man art covers and whatnot. So you can recognize this stuff even if you don't know exactly what issue came from. But uh, yeah, so this issue deals a lot more with um, the fallout of the time travel and all the all the mistakes that they made uh, in the previous issues. And, you know, Peter finds out that, you know, Aunt May and young Peter are, you know, captured by the goblin. He goes to stop them. Meanwhile, Teresa and Jameson are closing in on the Tinker. Uh, and Teresa apparently has this, like, flight pack or something, kind of like a Falcon-esque type gear. Um, but uh, she has sort of a brief... Uh, fight with the tinker and it appears that the building they are in blows up um but uh yeah this stuff with the goblin facing down against future peter and past peter with aunt may kind of hanging in the balance man it's just really good stuff i mean this is like classic spider-man um like i said dan slot is the only spider-man i know um of course like in the 90s i was reading um, Spider-Man with Eric Larson, I think, on the book, and Mark Bagley. But it was all about the art and stuff then, and it was more epic-type stories. This feels more personal, like smaller, more intimate-type storytelling. This is just good stuff. Um, and, of course, like here we have some more classic throwback art here. Um, yeah, it's just good stuff. But Peter gets surprised by Norman because he's maxed out on the Goblin Serum. Uh, basically, the uh, Teresa and the Tinker were saved from the burning building by Jameson. And uh, this little robot, this is the only part that just straight up confused me. This is like, this little robot comes roaring out of the building and uh, hands over something to Teresa. I'm guessing he might have been in the previous story arc or something with the Tinker. But yeah, the little robot dies. So sad. Um, but he gives them the secret they were after. Um, but yeah, then you have this amazing, we go back to this amazing two Peters, uh, young and old versus the goblin. Um, yeah, it's just such great stuff. He detonates the bridge. Aunt May falls. Uh, Peter realizes you know, how wrong this has gone. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll let you find out the rest. Um, basically they wrap up sort of with a little bit here with Teresa revealing, you know, that she's found out, you know, evidence that, you know, the Parkers are her parents. And uh, they have a little celebration here and uh, young Peter kind of like blows them off initially. He's like, you know, I'll be right there. I'm throwing out the trash. And it's revealed on the last page that, again, we have some classic throwback Spider-Man stuff here. It's sort of like the Spider-Man No More imagery. So, yeah, um, feels like this issue, or these three issues, are going to have big consequences uh, going forward. You know, classic time travel stuff. Uh, you know, it's hard to believe that three people as capable as Peter and Teresa and Jameson, you know, would screw up time travel this badly. But uh, there you have it. It does make for a fun story regardless. Um, you know, uh, I'm excited to see the next issue. Um, it's not, you know, this felt like a solid conclusion, you know, uh, you know, but I don't think I'll bow out here. I think I'll keep reading. I'm still feeling like I want to read some Spidey. Um, traditionally, I've always bought a Spider-Man book, so doesn't feel right if I'm not reading some kind of Spider-Man something. And since he's not on the Avengers or anything right now, I think I'm just going to stick with the spectacular Spider-Man for now. Um, this is great stuff. Um, and I feel like uh, 
the amazing Spider-Man uh, creative team comes on very soon. Uh, I think it's Nick Spencer. Um, and I probably will check that out. But, uh, man, it's going to have to be something special to lure me away from this. Because I really like this. This is Spider-Man, like, you know, with a different creative voice and stuff that I'm not used to. And, frankly, I like it. It's refreshing. It's, it's good stuff. It felt dramatic and exciting and yeah just very much the essence of spider-man um like you know i don't know like you would have remembered him like you know on this smaller scale <laughs> although when we get back to the future i'm i'm assuming it's going to get back to the save the world stuff but hey this was a great introduction to the book for me let me know what you thought of the book did you enjoy these three um are you liking a change from Dan Slott. Are you looking forward to the Nick Spencer stuff? Let me know below. Let me know on a scale of one to 10, how reckless the time travel is in this book. It's just crazy. Um, but uh, that would be my only complaint. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Ring the bell. I do plan on cranking out more videos very soon. And thanks for joining me on the Stellar Highway.